Hello, my name is Catherine Foley and I'm going to read again today from my book Beyond the Breakwater and today's chapter is 24. It's called Boarding School. I hope you enjoy it. It was my aunts who took me to Cork to have me fitted out in a brown gym slip for boarding school in Ardfoyle on the banks of the Lee. They paid for the blazer with the school crest on it too. They judged the effect turning me around to study the cut of the uniform on my little 12-year-old frame. They tightened the sash and fixed the pleats and I felt like an experiment as they lavished me with the best of everything, even treating me to tea in the Walter Raleigh Hotel in Yall on our way home. I arrived home laden down with a great pile of parcels and bags. Of course my younger sisters were green with envy as I paraded around in my new uniform and gabardine coat. All belted up in the brown ensemble, I tightened the buckle, placed the school beret at a jaunty angle atop my head and swaggered around like Marlena Dietrich playing Mata Hari. As I counted the days until I'd be driven to my new school some 60 miles away, I sewed special name tags onto everything. My new pair of sheets, two new linen napkins, two new blankets, a Foxford rug and a little grey game skirt with a swish that I could easily see myself wearing when I went out with my first ever hockey stick onto the playing pitch. I'd be saying goodbye to the rough and tumble of camogie matches in the Gaeltacht. It would be a life of hockey games, sports mistresses and midnight feasts, just like in Eden, Enid Blyton's Mallory Towers or St Clair's. I started thinking about tuck boxes and I wondered if they'd have a sports hall, a belfry or a matron for when I was sent to the infirmary. My initials were carved into my own cutlery set and I got a heavy silver table ring for my two new linen napkins. And Auntie Sheila gave me a great American suitcase with fading labels pasted on its sides, mementos of her exotic honeymoon cruise to New York and other trips to Corfu and Rome. As I packed the case with four new vests, eight pants, half a dozen brown knee socks, the school tie, my new dressing gown, slippers and a toilet bag, I felt my own journey to faraway Cork and the boarding school was well on a par with such travels. My life would be spectacular worth writing about in a novel, like The Life of Jane Eyre, The Little Madeline or Anne of Green Gables. And in the end, it was as good as any Enid Blyton novel. We had a Miss Fiona Walton for English, a Mr O'Driscoll for history, tobogganing during the snow and a head girl to lead us in grace before meals. I woke every morning to the sound of bells being rung up and down the dormitory aisles. After breakfast, we'd shiver on the avenue walk to our classroom, classrooms. The ice in the gravel cracked underfoot in the eerie stillness of the morning. At night, we'd gather in the refectory, deafening ourselves as we dragged our 200 stools out from under the tables to sit as one for dinner. Still, nothing could compare with being home for Christmas. I sat at the kitchen table watching my mother shake the flour loose and kneading the dough as she made brown bread, and not in my stomach as I felt the days slip away. I tiptoed around in case it was a dream. My sisters in turn tiptoed around me. In a way, I was like a stranger in their midst. All too quickly the Christmas holidays were over and I was back at school again, suspended in that strange school universe, adrift at night in a sea of echoing silence. By the start of the second term I knew all too well the daily rituals of boarding school, as well as the longing, loneliness and wishing that went with it. At bedtime in my little cubicle, even as I tried to damp down the waves of homesickness, a terrible tide of longing would sweep me along. 
the only relief for homesickness came on Sunday afternoon at exactly 3 p.m. when I would stand on the convent landing and focus all my attention on the public payphone there. Its sudden explosion into life was terrifying, but I'd pick up the receiver and hear my mother's voice. Then a tightness would grip my chest and I'd lose the ability to speak at first. But as str st tears streamed out of my eyes, I would give vent to the great river of loss that my 12 year old self could hardly understand. So, Shinamade, that's all for today. Thank you. Bye now.